The same anger, the same rage that can put me on death row, I can use that same energy and do good things. Does that make sense? It's the same rage. I'm talking your ear off right now because I'm angry. I'm just deciding to do positive things with that anger. If I do bad things with my anger, guess what they're going to do? They're gonna, there's a hundred billion dollar correction system that will lock me up for the rest of my life if I take my problems and hurt myself, hurt other people with them. So I started realizing there is literally a switch inside of my own brain. I have to constantly remind myself, Christian, you have to flip that switch and use your problems as your best friend. I'll give you an example. The other day, I got invited to speak. I was in a community speaking to the schools, and the superintendent of the schools said, Christian, I want, you to take, I want to take you over to the detention center. In our community, we have a group of kids. We have 17 young men who are locked up for murder. Now, each one of these 17 young men are going to get out of this detention center in the next 5 to 10 years because of their age when they committed murder. And I go to the detention center. I walk in there, and... I kind of come in there unannounced with the superintendent and the people who run the detention center look at me and they're like, who are you and where are you from? I said, well, right now I live in Utah. I actually married a girl from Utah. If you marry a girl from Utah, your butt lives in Utah the rest of your life. And um, <laughs> and they kind of looked at me and said, they didn't realize I was from D.C. or my background or different things. And the director of the detention center just freaks out. She goes, there's no way you could talk to these kids. You'll never relate to these kids. And she's very judgmental, very angry that I was even there. And I'm trying to set up my, you know, my PowerPoint, my laptop, my projector. And she says, hey, the kids are walking down here right now. We don't have time for you to set up your crap. You need to start talking right now. And I'm like, all right. I mean, just you know, intense anger coming at me. So I'm like, man, how do I get these kids' attention? So there's a light switch in the room. Now, I do not recommend you do this in a detention center. <laughs> I, I walked over to the light switch and started flipping it off and on really quick because I kind of was losing control of my own defense mechanisms because I was being treated. I was being very discriminated against. And being a white kid raised in an African-American home, when I am being rever discriminated against, it gets me slightly fired up. Everybody with me on that? So I flipped the light switches on and off in the detention center. And I tell these kids, there is a switch inside of your head, and you have to use that switch to not come back here. Research shows, I told them, I said, research shows about 80% of you are going to come back to this detention center when you leave here. But I can almost guarantee, if you can understand one concept, you do not have to come back to this detention center when you get left, when, they leave, when you leave here. You do not have to come back here. And I said, I want to teach you right now how you can have an advantage being locked up for murder than someone who is at Harvard. Everybody catch what the words I just said? I just said some crazy words. How can someone who is locked up for murder have an advantage over a student at Harvard who's been in graduate school at Harvard? Well, I had a pretty unique life experience. While I was going through college at a major university, kind of Ivy League type university, I got to work in a comprehensive clinic at, at a major university as a therapist. And I started having a pretty fascinating experience. Students who were straight-A students, who were valedictorians, they could go to Harvard, Yale, any university in this country. I started dealing with case after case of suicide. Because what would happen is their girlfriend would break up with them. They got a B on a test instead of an A on the test, so they weren't able to get into whatever medical school they were trying to get into, and they took their lives. And one day it hit me, holy cow, if someone understands resiliency. Now, resiliency is not about success. I'm not talking about res success. Resiliency is the ability to bounce back. I realized that a child could be locked up for murder if they take the pain. I said to those kids, you think about that murder when you wake up in the morning, you think about that murder when you go to bed at night, that fuel is inside of you. And I talked about their rage, I don't have time to go into details here, but I said, you have to use that rage as a reason to start turning in your homework, stay in school, and not come back to this prison. And you could just see a light bulb go on in these kids' eyes, because for the first time, they, they literally realized that they could literally have an advantage over someone at Harvard if they could see their problems as their best friend. That is the most powerful tool I've ever been taught, because no teacher, counselor, or social worker could get rid of my parents' mental illness. They couldn't get rid of the neighbor I grew up in. What if some great educator would have came to me and said, Christian, I'm going to show you step by step that if you work hard, if you use your pain as fuel, you can do anything with your life. Everybody has that switch.